there was this fight that we had with our KTM group uh, to Udupi, and it was through the Agumbe rainforest. That's and and that was fully in rain. I mean, it started pouring while going from Assam, and it almost rained till we reached Udupi. Same happened when we started in the morning from Udupi, and it rained all the way till Assam. <laughs> almost so we were fully dressed that was one experience that i would want to call it out was very different because uh what was unique about that rain is that we didn't stop anywhere because it was raining we did slow our speed down because it was raining the only thing that we kept doing was keep riding it was 20 bikes and we just kept riding The only breaks was, you know, the usual tea breaks and all that stuff like that. And then that we would try to pour water out of our boots and gloves and whatever, and then just continue to ride. By the time I reached Bangalore, my legs, as everything was swollen with excessive water, so so that was one hell of an experience. Not sure that people would want to experience that and do that. Maybe somebody who wants to do that will go with a lot of protective rain gear, but. But that's something that you don't do often, and when you do it, it's like a different experience altogether. And the most memorable things was that our equipment, the bike, supported us very well. Our uh, luggage was more dry because we used good luggage. This memorable interaction, I would want to call it, is from the very beginning days of our riding. Okay, we used to have what 150 cc, 180 cc. Somebody privileged had 200 or 250 cc motorcycle at that point in time. We used to push those bikes to the limit and go for rides nearby Bangalore or say even to to places like Mumbai or Munnar or wherever. We used to go for bikes and and to push our bikes to the limit, we used to be down, tucked in, fully. And and you can imagine that 15, 20 bikes are just going at whatever speed they can achieve, 100, 105, or 110. These these were the speeds that our bikes could achieve. And everyone is bent down, and all of a sudden you see all, all the tails of every bike is waving, and everyone. We didn't have any comm system or any sign languages to say, "Hey, we want to stop." But you will see automatically all the bikes stop, and they're taking you down. Why? Because we crossed a good daba, <laughs> and the smell of food was <laughs> good in presence. <laughs> so those days, riding used to be a lot of fun. We used to ride like anything. And uh, we used to eat like it. <laughs> so eating was the experience that everyone was connected without any comm system. I would say a dhaba crossed and everyone is right there. Everyone got the message that let's talk and let's eat. See, the taste has changed over a period of time. You know, I mean, when we were fairly young, I mean, school or college days. That time, any bike that looked good, okay, doesn't matter if it was a cruiser, doesn't matter if it was a super sport. But yeah, I mean, early days, I had something for super, super sports. Uh, so Yamaha R1 used to be my favorite bike, and it it was till a long time. But then, you know, I mean, when we, I have matured to now adventure bikes. And uh, these are the bikes which appeal to me because uh, one, they are like a workhorse; they can carry your luggage, and uh, even if you want to carry a tent, then, you know, go to the car lot, buy something, dump it on your bike, you can go anywhere. I mean, you don't need a tent. <laughs> If people allow you to put tents on their piece of land, so yeah, I mean, uh, so adventure bikes. It's comfortable. Uh, you can churn miles into them. In a day, you can cover close to nine thousand to nine hundred two thousand kilometers, depending on your capacity. But then, you know, I mean, when we got into riding, then you realize that okay, I mean, super bikes are good for short rides. You can go on breakfast rides. You can do small uh, rides in and around. Uh, Where you live, you can't practically or and comfortably do long rides unless. What is happening these days is somebody has a budget of, say, or they have 
capacity of buying a bike worth three lakhs, four lakhs. They are stretching and going to seven lakhs, eight lakhs, or ten lakhs. They are buying a bike that they cannot afford, and then they do not invest on safety. You would see the people come with bikes which are more than twenty, twenty-five lakhs, but they are not very adequate. I'm out of safety here. I'm not saying that the, these boots. I would not want to call any brands in here. That they are not good, but they they might be good for a particular speed level or till the application of it. I mean, in city, certain gear and equipment are good, but once you go on highway, you need to think about what does fit for a highway. What is good for a highway? Whether that gear is going to provide you adequate safety or not, and and invest accordingly. So these days, Indian brands are doing really well. Uh, you should look at certification. You should look at uh, comfort, and then buy what meets your budget. But invest. Spend a little less on the motorcycle, and invest on riding gear. See what happens is a lot of times you will see that somebody buys a motorcycle. They'll take it to an accessory shop and they'll immediately put uh, the crash bars. Then they want the expensive auxiliary lights. Then you know saddle stays, top locks, and everything. You use those equipments very less in India, but you ride almost every day. So you should invest on riding gear first, rather than accessorizing your motorcycle, spending so much of money on the motorcycle. I did not act to ride the motorcycle for a very long time. I went on each ride and decided what do I need, what am I missing, and then added stuff. So I have invested in safety. Uh, so as I was saying, very important to invest on rides. Think about instead of spending or splurging your money on things that you don't need or you might use it very less, spend on riding gear. Make yourself safe. Spend on a good lid. Most important. There are people who commute. Commute. Okay. Yeah. Use motorcycles to commute. And there are people who wanted to be more than commute. It's an expression of their passion. I mean, that is what rider is to me. I mean, you pick up your motorcycle and you go to explore places. The sense of freedom that it gives you at the time when you're riding. There's nothing else going in your head. You're not worrying about your conference calls. You're not worrying about your sales target. You're not worrying about your project getting deployed or not or whatever. You, you're not worried about all those things. All you're worried about is the road ahead of you and the fun that you're having, the rush that it gives you. That is what I think makes people go for it. Bikers should be known for people who are out there to have fun, are responsible people. When an opportunity, uh, help fellow riders, help other people on the road, and this is there. I mean, you know, a biker. Uh, there's an instant connect between two bikers. You might not know each other. You just cross each other and you wave hands. Or if you see somebody stop next to the road, you immediately stop and ask, "Hey, what happened? Everything all right? Is it just a pit stop or something has happened?" So that instant connect is there. That brotherhood is there. Use that responsibly. Have fun. A lot of people are not responsible with their throttle on the road. That's something that they need to take care of. Always keep this in your head when you head out in the morning. That uh, somebody is waiting for you back at home. This family, this friends. You know, if you're married, you have wife. If you have kids, you have kids who are waiting for you. Got to always think that you got to come back home for them. You go out there to enjoy, have fun, experience, and come back. Why for? Uh, well, one big keyword I would want to use over here is that keep your ego down while riding. Somebody is overtaking you. Fine, is overtaking you. Does not mean that you need to overtake him back and prove something that oh, I'm overtaken. Very nice. Let that go. Enjoy your life. Don't less about what others are doing. Keep a 360 degree understanding of what's happening around you, and ride responsibly. Is what I say. Have fun, but ride responsibly. People doing 
unnecessary speeds are our indian roads not knowing what what can happen when and uh, zero regard for safety sometimes they don't even have proper safety gear right they do all that and one sar incident and we all get penalized because of that somebody stupidity and everyone gets affected by it. so so people got to think about it quite much the de-stress mechanism okay we take so this over the week about everything i mean about work this that life i mean when you are out there with the motorcycle there's no stress take the stress off enjoy so that that's what keeps you going on a motorcycle i mean you know open roads ahead of you go out have fun and come back okay? you charged up for the next week whatever duration oh, okay.